this lesson, I'm going to show you how to read word problems and solve for them accurately. It is a struggle for students to be able to pick the correct operation to solve for word problems. And so I'm going to show you some strategies and tips that you can use in order to solve for them accurately. Okay? So anytime when you have a word problem like this, okay, so there are a couple of ways of doing this. First of all, what I like to use is what's called three reads. In which students, I, I see there are certain needs and so I kind of modify the three reads. So if you've ever come across the three reads that, um, that are taught in school, my three reads may be a little bit different than theirs. So this problem says, Timothy and Anna combine their savings to buy a gift for their grandmother's 90th birthday. The cost of the gift is $41. Timothy has $18 and Anna has $15. How much money do Timothy and Anna still need to buy a gift for their grandmother? So after you read this problem the first time, you zoom right into the question to ask, what is the question asking? In this case, the question is asking how much money do Timothy and Anna still need to buy the gift for their grandmother? The second read, I like to read it sentence by sentence and we start organizing information from the story. Timothy and Anna combine their savings to buy a gift for their grandmother's 90th birthday. So I would write down using the information I know from this sentence. This sentence tells me that Timothy and Anna combine, the word combine tells me that they're adding, okay, in order to buy the gift. Notice how I make this and this kind of the same. We're talking about gifts and gifts. The second sentence, the cost of the gift is $41. So where the gift is, you substitute numbers in place of the words. So the gift is $41. And then it says Timothy has $18. So right underneath Timothy, I'm going to put $18. And Anna has $15. So right underneath Anna's, Anna's name, I'm going to put $15. Now it's asking how much money do Timothy and Anna still need to buy the gift? So right here, we can actually solve for this. So how we solve for it is we're gonna add those two together and what we will get is 33. And as you can see, 33 is actually not the same as 41. That's why this is reflecting of my question right here. It says that I still need something here. I still need to combine, to need to add. Something is missing here because this is still less than this amount. So there are two ways I can do this. I can either count up from 33 until I get to 41, or the quicker way to do it is actually take 41 and subtract this to see how much this is. So basically I'm doing the opposite. with this problem, the last question I need to ask is, does this number answer the question? So the question says, how much money do we still need to buy the gift? And we say they still need $8 to buy the gift. Does that make sense? Is that reasonable? And in this case, it is. Because they already have $33, so all they need is another $8 in order to, um, to buy that gift that is worth $41 for grandma. So there was my three weeks. Now let's look at the next problem. Again, when I'm presented with, with another problem, I'm going to apply the three weeks. I will read it the first time to understand what the problem is asking. So the video game rental company reviewed its profits each month. In March, the company had a net loss in profits of $7,350. In April, the company had another net loss in profits of $4,281. What is the difference between the company's profits from March to April? 
So again, what is the question asking? The question is asking, what is the difference? When I hear the word difference, I need to ask myself, is this problem about combining, comparing, or groups? Combining is addition problems, comparing are subtraction problems, and groups are multiplication or division problems. So in this case, because the question is asking what is the difference, we're seeing that they're comparing. So the word difference tells us that we're comparing. Because we're comparing, I know we're subtracting. March was first, and then April. And then this is where we can find the difference. We're gonna go back and read one sentence at a time. A video game rental company reviewed its profits each month. This sentence right here actually does not have any critical information except to tell us the story of what's happening. So we don't have to fill anything here. And then the next sentence, it says in March, the company had a net loss in profits of 7,350. This information right here is relating to March. So I'm gonna put it down as such. In April, the company had another net loss of profits of 4,281. So it's relating to April, so I'm gonna put it down underneath April. Okay, I can take away the, the money sign for now because that's too much for me to focus on. And then now it's asking what is the difference? And so because there's nothing here that tells us that whatever answer here will be the answer that we need for over here. The last time I read is I want to say if this actually answers this question. Okay, first of all, am I looking for the difference? Yes, I am. And when I look for the difference, I can see that this number is less than this. And so it kind of gives me an idea that I'm on the right track. So let's look at some multiplication or division problems. Okay, at the end of each school week, Miss Green gives away eight homework passes to students with highest grades. How many homework passes does Ms. Green give away after five weeks? Right here, I'm going to ask, is this comparing, combining, or are we talking about groups? I don't see combining, do you? Are we combining homework passes with weeks? Well, we can't do that. Did you know that that's a red flag for you when you're adding or subtracting two different things? We cannot do that. This one has to do with passes and weeks, okay? So we cannot add these, the eight and the five together. This tells me that this has something to do with groups. When it's groups, there are a couple of different ways you can model this problem. You can actually model or a diagram, or you can actually use a T-chart. And um, I actually have learned that the T-chart is very helpful because it helps us to keep information more organized. So I'm gonna start with the T-chart. This was in the question itself. Now I'm gonna go back and do my second read and I'm gonna take it one sentence at a time. It says, at the end of the school week, Miss Green gives away eight homework passes. Eight homework passes. It says at the end of each. Each means one school week. So that's week one. And the question is asking, how many homework passes does Ms. Green give away after five weeks? This number five here belongs to weeks, so I'm gonna put it down here. We already said that this is a question that has to do with groups. That means we have to think of multiplying or dividing. And so I'm gonna start finding relationship. So what do I multiply one by to get to eight? You can say, oh, it's an easy times eight. So whatever I do here, I'm going to do the exact same thing down here and I'm going to get 40 passes. And so it says, how many homework passes does Ms. Green give away after five weeks? 40 passes makes sense. Because if she gave away eight passes in one week, then in five weeks she will be giving away 40 passes. So the question is asking how much is a kid ticket? So let's go ahead and go back to the tickets to an amusement park 
are $55.50 per adult. So here's an adult ticket, and it is $55.50. And then it says a kid ticket costs cost seven tenths times the price of an adult ticket. This word also tells me the operation. Seven tenths times adult ticket will give you a kid ticket. So after I solved for it, I'm gonna get $38 and 85 cents, which is the amount of the kid's ticket. And I need to put the money sign in because that tells me that this is relating to money, just to see if I'm actually answering the question. So the question asks, how much does a kid ticket cost? It makes sense. Seven tenths of this ticket means that it is less than the adult's ticket. And this amount is less than the adult ticket, so I know that I did this correctly and I'm on the right track. 